Welcome back to my animation channel. Thanks very much for joining me. In this video, we're going to have a quick look at a bit of a walk cycle that I created for a character in the scene that I'm building in my animating with OpenTunes course. Please have a look at that. And then let's have a look at how Skeleton works. So we go down to that bones icon in the tab, the vertical tab there. Go select that. And there are the bones. And basically how this works is the bones are set up as the schematic is set up. So it's a parenting system. And whatever is the parent, the bones will come off that parent all the way down. So we've made this midriff there, his stomach, chest area, the, the, the parent of everything. And everything will come off there. So it's not magic. There's logic to bones. And they will follow how you set it up in the schematic. So if you change it in the schematic, the whole bone set up will change so that's how that all works and then as you go and select on these columns you will be selecting one of those bones so if you want to rotate or move one of the body parts you just select on the columns let's go and create more space to animate here with go and select all these columns and drag them down create some working space here and let's go and start animating now in skeleton there's two ways to animate there's animate, which is where you go and grab a body part and, and you move it. Then you have to move another body part, etc., etc. Or there's inverse kinematics, however you pronounce it. I pronounce it kinematics, kinematics. And that is when you grab a body part and you move it. And the body parts, the skeleton and the body parts attached to that will move with it. So it can speed up things like walk cycles where you just go and move, say, a foot or something. Instead of moving every leg part with the foot on the end, just grab the foot. And you can just move the foot and all those leg parts, the lower leg, the upper leg, etc. will move with them. So pretty cool. And it is nice to use on something like a walk cycle. Also, how this works is when you go and select the joint here, control select a joint, the node, that, that will make it the anchor. It turns blue and then with IK inverse kinematics on, it will rotate around that, will move around that node. So we want to keep the core blue, that will be our core node. Everything's going to be moving around the core, so don't have it, for instance, in the foot or the knee. So we keep that as the mother and keep that blue. And then we can start animating this. So let's grab his foot. Also, the other thing is when you select these nodes, they give little, little levers pop out, and that's how you can rotate them. So those purple little things are levers. And you can adjust the rotation of the actual body part with with those levers. So very cool. It's nice to work with IK and inverse kin kinematics, however you want to pronounce it. Um, I don't use it much, but it is pretty cool to use. And I think it's probably a little bit faster than plastic on a walk cycle. I prefer using plastic, and you'll see why shortly. There's little things in this that, there's little things in plastic as well that um, I've got used to them and I've, I've made little workarounds. But there's a few little things here that, that I don't really like. But for this, we're going to do this character in IK with the skeletons. So let's go and pull in those templates that we saved in an earlier video. Let's go and import them. So let's go to the file that they saved in, wherever you've saved them on your system. Save them straight out of the course into your system. There they are there. And we're going to do a left to right to so import them. And they import 24 frames. And there it is there. So once again, we're going to use the templates as a, as a guide. Let's go and grab the torso of this character and scale them and move them in. And again, drop the opacity of the templates down. It's actually the templates above the character, but with the opacity drop down, we can see through them. And we want to go and scale this character up to fit as well. So the first thing is just to set up the basic part of the walk here, the first stride. So let's go and work with the knees and the feet here, and also the arms. Go and grab the elbows. Unlike plastic, we don't have to do this on every frame. We can go and skip to the every sixth frame, which is a upside of using this versus plastic. Somehow with plastic, you have to set it for every frame. Here we, we can go and jump frames. So every sixth frame, let's go and set a key. And see when, when you set a key for the foot, when you're using the IK and you, you move the foot, 
It also goes and sets keys for the other pieces that move. That's how it works. So it's setting a key for the lower leg and the upper leg. That's that's the cool thing of IK. It does really speed this workflow up quite a bit. So we're just going through every six frame, six, 12, 18, 24, and we're setting keys for the legs. There's a bit that I don't really like about skeleton. As you see, this knee here is opening up and it's exposing a hole in his jeans where it's kind of coming apart there. You won't get that in plastic. You'll get other things, but you won't get that. Because these are two separate parts, they sometimes expose the edges. So that can be a little finicky thing that you have to work around with skeletons. Uh, you will have little finicky things in plastic that you have to work around. But the skeleton thing, that is one of the things. It's probably the main thing I don't like about it. But uh, it's very efficient and use it a lot because it really does speed up basic things. With mechanical things as well, it's perfect, absolutely perfect. So it's great to, to use. It just has, has a few little quirks, but doesn't everything. So does plastic. So. so we've set this guy up. Basically, we've got him walking across 24 frames. And then another trick I like to do is to go and put in a line, a ground line here. So let's just go and draw a line in, in a new column right across the bottom here. And this is going to be the ground line with the control set. As you draw it, it will draw a straight line. So just keep control down, make it straight. And then we can go and position this guy, put in a bit of rotation because his body will be rotating as well as he walks. So with the tool so selected, we can go and position him correctly and get his height right. Because as you walk, you'll be bopping up and down. You, you don't stay on the same plane. Obviously, the, the floor, the, the ground doesn't move. Obviously, hopefully not. And that's what that line's representing. But you will be moving up and down. So we need a little bit of vertical movement with him, which you'll get off the skeletons. But basically, how the walk cycle works is where the crosser over is the pass is the highest point of the walk cycle so your head will be at the highest the character's head will be bopping up at that point and the lowest point will be where the strike part will be the lowest part so the the walk cycle will bop up and down and we try and capture that obviously your feet are not going through the floor that's why we've put in this ground line as a guide and we just try and get that right Okay, so another thing that happens, and this, to be honest, happens in plastic as well, but probably happens more in skeletons as you get these big gaps here. You see there between the torso and the upper legs, you see how that's rotating around. The pivot is slightly under the torso there and it's becoming exposed. Now there's a few ways to fix that, but we are going to do a fast fix if you want to call it that. Let's create a new column. Go and join that column to the torso. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paint in a background here. So basically it fills that gap. So as he walks there, you can see there's a gap on his knee as well. We could do the same there as well. We're not going to, and I'll tell you why, because this character is not going to be front and foreground. But if he was one of our main characters, we'd also go and fix up his knees, etc. But let's go and paint in some body here, and we've put it behind the torso. So we can paint it with the jeans color, or we can come and paint it with the skin color. Probably more amusing if it's skin color. Not that we're really going to see this, but it's going to block that out. It's basically on the stride steps of the walk cycle where it really comes apart there. Also, go drop in some black line. And now it's looking like his stomach. So it's actually quite amusing. Little problem that's added something to the character. Little tweak. Um, anyway, this happens with skeletons. It happens a bit with um, plastic as well. You get these gaps because it rotates around the pivot points and it's, it's not perfect. So often you'll get these little gaps. You get better at it designing these things so that they don't gap like this, but it usually occurs. So let's just go and drop some more detail on him. Put a little logo, a little target on his hat. Not that this guy's going to be front and center. He's just going to be in the background. But let's go and add some detail to him. Add some hair to his beard and also some highlights to his shirt. Once again, using the lock alpha key on to do such things so that we don't paint outside of the areas. And yeah, I think he's looking okay. 
So that's it in a nutshell. The full 15 to 20 minute video is up in my course and there's a whole bunch more going up this week to do with walk cycles and animating using both plastic and skeletons. Please check it out. The details are in the description section of YouTube here. And once again, as always, if you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe and also I have an email service that I send to my subscribers. Please sign up for that. And otherwise, thanks once again for joining my channel and happy animating out there. See you again soon. All the best. Bye.